before we start work on the CG125 engine checking the valves, the tappet clearance a few simple things we have to do first of all make sure the engine is quite cold we can't adjust the inlet or the exhaust valve before it's quite cold we'll get a false reading if the engine is still warm or hot you need to take off the cover so you can see the valves and the rockers You need to take out the spark plug, this makes it much easier to turn the engine over. Then take the gear stick off the shaft, just below the gearbox bracket. And then, so we can get at the floor wheel, you take off the engine cover that's covering the floor wheel and the gearbox bracket. As the engine's turned over by the floor wheel and you turn in a clockwise direction you'll notice the piston comes up and down and what we're trying to achieve is get the piston to top dead centre. The floor wheel is marked on the top and there's a, a little mark there that you align the mark on the crankcase and the mark on the floor wheel with to make sure this is a top dead centre ready to adjust the valves. As you turn the floor wheel anti-clockwise you'll see various marks coming up. One has got an F on it. You can clearly see the F there. That is for when the engine is firing. For when the spark plug has a spark and that's the ignition. The one we're interested in as we turn it anti-clockwise is the T mark. A line there and you match up that line with the line on the crankcase and you see the T and that's the top dead centre you need to achieve that and here's the piston as it comes to the top while turning that floor wheel anti-clockwise you see it reach the top and just a little bit of a wiggle to get that line marked up correctly that's it, and there we are, that's ready to do the valves. Maybe not though. Unfortunately, when you turn the engine over, anti-clockwise, this is a four-stroke engine, so the piston will come to the top twice each time in a firing cycle. So the one is where it fires, and where you also adjust the tappets, the valve clearance and the other time it's when it's coming up after ignition and it's pushing the exhaust gas out of the exhaust valve and we don't want it in that position the marks will still correspond with each other it will look like it's correct and the piston will be at the top but it's, it's totally unsuitable to do the valve clearance so we need to keep turning the engine over and make sure that we have it on top dead centre where we need it to adjust the valves once we've done that we can then adjust the valves when you, when you take off the rocker cover on the CG engine and have a look inside and see the rockers and the valves as you turn the engine over you'll notice the sequence from top dead center, the piston at the top, as it goes down, you'll see the rocker move like that. It will push down on the inlet valve, you'll see it going down that way. It'll open the inlet valve, allow petrol and air to go inside the combustion chamber. And as the piston comes back up, you'll see the rocker raise, and you'll see the valve come up as well. And that will be the compression stroke where the spark plug ignites the petrol and air mixture that will be the power stroke the piston will start to go down again and as it comes up you'll see the rocker move like that on the exhaust valve push down and open the exhaust valve and then as it comes up and this rocker starts to raise again 
valve coming back up. At some point you'll see the inlet valve again going through its motion of being opened. And you've got to find out where the part of the firing order is, where the piston is, the top dead centre, where you need it to do the valve adjustment. So the best way to do that, as you're turning the floor wheel around, you'll see the inlet go down, push the valve open, and it's when the marks align after that part. When this rocker raises back up and the, line, the marks line up, that is the compression stroke, that is where you adjust the tappets. To adjust the valve clearance, we need to undo the lock nut. But first, you slide in a feeler gauge of the correct size to see if the gap's correct. If you find that you can't get it in, or very very stiff to move between the tappet and the valve, then the gap needs to be increased. And if you find it's too much gap and you can put a larger feeler gauge in, then the gap needs to be closed. You undo the lock nut, and then you adjust on the adjusting screw. And when you turn it, when you turn it in, in a clockwise motion, that decreases the gap, and if you get it to there's no valve clearance, you'd start to open the valve itself. So, to make the gap smaller, turn it clockwise, to make the gap bigger, turn it anti-clockwise, and eventually you get that nice sliding fit with a feeler gauge of the right size and the idea is when you've got a nice sliding fit you then very carefully tighten down the lock nut and it's best to hold down the adjusting screw as well what I tend to do once I've got that nice sliding feel to the feeler gauge I back it off just a fraction, perhaps eighth of a turn, sixteenth of a turn, so it becomes a little bit easier to turn. You've got that nice sliding cup there, a little bit too much, and you just turn it round a bit and it increases again so it's a nice fit. Just back it off about sixteenth of a turn and then while you're moulding the adjusting screw, you tighten the lock nut and what you'll find, and what I found, is that adjusting screw will just turn that little bit in, no matter how hard you hold it with a spanner, it will just move just that fraction and that nice, very easy sliding gap will decrease down to the sort of normal gap that you'd want. And that's what I do. I found that if I do the adjustment and I just get it to that nice slidey feel and then I tighten up the lock nut, as I'm just finishing off the lock nut, it tends to just tighten up that little bit and then the nice sliding feel to it, it isn't there. And that's why I just back it off just that little tiny bit and then tighten down the lock nut. And then hopefully, job done, tap it's adjusted, we've got the valve clearance correct, and all you need to do is put back on the valve cover, and if need be, put a new gasket on as well. And while you've got the cover off, you might as well take advantage of that, and check your gearbox sprocket at the same time.